back up. Jealous eyes see me rack up. Once flake load that track up. Competition start to slack up. So severe. Listen here as I get my point clear. Wackness disappear when I destroy your career. Your baby mama steady jocking. Got me in every rotation. Flames radio spinning. The realest radio station. Devastating the minds with lyrical programming. Even people who don't like rap say. Understanding there is no need for explanations. Got the drink and the smoke. So continue the celebration. Players be situated to stop anyone hating your talent exaggerating i'm the one who deflating not the world relating to this moment i'm making for those who patiently waiting smell the cake that i'm baking bro is sick with the flow and this is all i know it's always a go and they never say no Yeah, 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 like we always do about this time. My name is Cornbread Home. This is Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty in real hip hop music. Today, we have a special guest. This is the first time that I'm actually speaking to someone of this generation. I don't know anything about this man, so we both gonna learn today about it you know what i'm saying first of all my brother please introduce yourself to everyone man i'm chopper you feel me aka chop you feel me from beaumont texas 49 you know a little bit about myself man yeah you how know, long man. have you been making music yeah about at least about six years about six years now six seven years okay about a while what what made you wanna decide to make music and take it serious? Yeah, as far as seeing my brother do it. Yeah, he got he got a little, you feel me, process with it. And he got a little, you know, engineering skills, you feel me? So that that that's just a little turn up, you feel me? Make us another push, you feel me? If I'm doing it and he doing it, you feel me, that's just an extra you feel me? Step up. Hmm. You know? And was there any artist that inspired you to make music, like outside of watching your brother? Yeah. A lot of artists, you feel me, as far as Lil Baby. Yeah. Artists that's not known, like YB, you know? He known, but shit. Playboy XO. I mean, that's, that's what inspired me more to actually push and actually want to do it. And if you could describe your music style, what would that be? Yeah. They say I got like kind of a, you feel me, a little Jada Young Inflo, feel me, kind of slowish, stylish, you feel me? A little bit of, you know. Both. I got some type of flow, man. I just can't put my finger on it. But you know. And your content. What is your content about? Man, I got a lot of content. Shit. Yeah. Boy, it's not the one that can be on camera, you feel me? I got a lot of drill process. Right. Gang related. You know, but it's not as far as to be took in to the bad note. I right. wanted to inspire motherfuckers, inspire people, you feel me? Inspire them to do better? Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting, man. Uh, outside of that, is there anything else you're doing? You got records for the females, you got records for the clubs, you got records for... I got a couple of records for the females. Just ain't heard yet. Got right. a lot of tracks, you feel me? Just unreleased. Okay. How yeah. many projects have you put out to date? Shit. I didn't put out about at least about 10, 12, 12 songs. Through the most. Right. How many videos? Since this year, Probably like one or two this year, but last year we was hitting it like more like eight, eight, nine videos about every month. That's about it. We slowed down this year, but 
we can we trying to pick up the process, you feel me, a little bit more. Yeah. And you from Beaumont. <clears throat> Beaumont. So I have to ask this question. Um are you aware that there's division out here between the rappers? <coughs> man, like what you mean when you say by division? Well, there's division that we can speak on and then there's division that we can't talk about. Mm -hmm. The stuff we can't talk about is what we can't talk about. Yeah. Okay, now let's talk about the division that we can talk about. There is uh, a clear line between young artists and older artists. For some reason, Fact. I don't know. I don't know why that is. Because you know, I came up in 1994, before the before internet, the, before yeah. YouTube, before <laughs> rappers got played on radio. Facts, facts. I was part of the people that helped set up to where we are now, as far as prior to being the internet, prior to being YouTube. Yeah. Okay, now it's only a few of us left. To be honest. Because mainly, it's more of y'all. It's more younger yeah, artists mm -hmm. that's around. But now, you have these artists who have, you know, a lot of younger artists, uh, you know, they don't deal with older artists. They don't talk to them. They don't chop it up with them. They don't sit around like how me and you yeah, talking right man, now. Yeah. And I'll be like, well, why? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I, okay, we both make music. We both from Beaumont, but... You can clearly see that the younger artists, they kind of over here. The older artists are over yeah, here. It's like a so why is like a why is it like a division? Because this is why I'm asking. If it wasn't no division, think about this. Beaumont could be like Atlanta. Because everybody would be a part of everybody's music and in everybody's videos, and the next thing you know. One gets success, but then after that, another one gets success because y'all all working together. Eventually, everybody's going to get success. You know what I'm saying? And then the, the floodgates going to open and then everybody's successful because everybody's working with everybody. But since it's not like that, it's the division. It's the older the artists, artists over here and the younger artists, artists over here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to figure out, well... Why is that? Because I know. Well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Man, it's kind of like it's like it's crazy, man. So, like, it's like a mind thing. Like, whatever the younger people talking about, if they like it, and the younger people are like riding that younger mentality wave, like it's a it's a thing with YB. Okay, he he got a whole like it's like a mind brainwash thing over the world. Like, okay. His music is really like making the younger people want to make music. Like his music is like it's live, man. It's like it's just it's just a different type of you feel me? Really? He, he's making people want to make music. Like for real, man. Like people been started, people been rapping, but when young boy actually got higher in the game, like with his music. He really started pushing it out there for young, more younger people to get looked at. Like he's doing, they looking at him too, but other youngsters gonna want to feed off of his energy. Right. I don't know no best way to say it, but that's how it is. And that's, I, I mean, if they that's, to if that's what, him, they if that's what, they, if that's what they're aspiring to do off of him, just to make music. Then I really don't have a I really don't have nothing negative to say about it. Mm -hmm. If you inspiring that person, now it's the question comes down to what is the music about? Because we all know you'll be hard pressed to find a rapper in 2022 mm -hmm. who represents anything positive. Mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to disrespect anybody. I'm just being honest. Like. Uh, you know, these people that we speak on, they got the numbers, they got the power, they got the influence, they known by people, but what are they promoting? Are they promoting death and destruction? Are they promoting education and knowledge? 
are they promoting uh you know incarceration and, and detriment you know what i'm saying of society and the world as we know it or are they promoting the good things the things that we are we aspire to be the things that we should be teaching our kids that's the question and then when it comes when those questions come and you pose that question to somebody they really can't answer it or you know you might get something that be honest and be like well I don't really hear boys talking about education, you know what I'm saying? I don't really hear boys talking about knowledge, you know, they talk about street stuff, you know what I'm saying? But I've been hearing street stuff all my life, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been in the streets all my life, so, and I guess that's why, you know, older, the older crowd, some of the older crowd don't get it, some of the older crowd do, I'm going to be honest with you, because... I used to think that there was nobody over the age of 30 who listened to YB. Until I, until, I, until I ran across a couple of people who said that they do. Now, I can't front. I'm a question in your musical taste. But that's just me because I don't listen. I don't really listen to nothing new. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't. You know what I'm saying? I, that's just me. But my feelings and my thoughts aside, these older people that do listen to it, it resonates something within them to make them listen to it. Yeah. Otherwise, they wouldn't listen to it at all. Cool. And I pay attention to that. I pay attention to that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm saying, well, okay, well, what is it about this that makes people want to listen? That's the part that got me like, okay, I'm, under, I'm paying like, attention cool. to that. Like, you know, forget what I feel, put that to the side and 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 start thinking, you know what I'm saying? Like, what attracts, what brings the crowd to this person? And then when you find that out, hopefully you can pinch a little bit off, add that to what you're doing, and then boom, you the one that everybody listening to. You see how that work, everybody? You know what I'm saying? Like, when you use your brain, instead of using um, hatred, because it's easy to hate people. How many people learn some learn something? How, how many times do you learn something from somebody, or something that you could take as some news that you can use and apply it to you? That's something that it took me a long time to grasp that. But um, as far as the future of two thousand twenty two, what are you? What are your plans to try to get out of the predicament that I'm in right now? Yeah, and get get on top. You know, I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be like the heart of the industry too. Like how 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 they making it look good out there. I want to see if that's really like how it is. I want to make it better though. They actually, step out there. Yeah. You talking about in the industry? In the industry, I'm trying to be. The heart of the industry, though, I want to be in there. Like, I want to be in the mix. I, I got to. Are you prepared to, to yeah, do that? Man, I'm ready. You know, not, not yet, but. You no, know, like, it's a lot that come with it. Once it come, you feel me? I'm, I ain't got no choice. I, you know what I'm saying? I, shit, I, yeah. I wish you nothing but the best, young brother. You know yes, what I'm saying? Sir. I hope you get, you know what I'm saying, what you, uh, what you feel like you deserve. You know what I'm saying? Uh, all I'm going to say is. Understand that this is a business. You know what I'm saying? Like being an artist is one thing. And you could care about being an artist, but you also need to have a level of care about your business, the paperwork, publishing is important, mm -hmm. ownership is important. All you know, they make all them books that say Barnes and Nobles about the music industry. Please read that. Because that'll make the difference between you being the rapper that Everybody talk about, yeah, he made hits, but he didn't make no money. Or you could be the one that, that you know what I'm saying, like Master P. Sit back and laugh at the industry because at the end of the day, Master P really got over on the industry. The industry is known for getting over on people. Keep this in mind. The industry is designed to keep artists broke and or in debt. Which means that it's designed to fuck over you. Rarely do you ever see anybody who fucks over the industry. And that's what they Master P did. 
That's what they don't know about the industry. Right. Master P got over on the industry. That's why I look at him like that. That's a symbol of respect. That's yeah. somebody who I could say, yes, he did not allow himself to fall short like so many other people did. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I can say, man, do before we get up out of here, do you have any last words? Any anything you like to plug, promote, tell the people about your maybe your social media pages? Yeah, man. Anything. Sh shout out shout out to uh the Instagram man. Like follow me on the gram at Gasway G Mile, you know. Yeah. We got it. yeah, shout out to the bros, you feel me? D in the back, track. <laughs> You know, we out of here. Already, man. I'm going to let my special guest introduce himself. What's going on, y'all? Peace to y'all. Boy, Joe Sign on here, you feel me? Going on, shit. Well, this guy is signed to Holmes ENT. Uh, first of all, let's go back to the beginning, man. When did you start taking music serious? Well, uh, for me, I started taking it serious like 2017. Like my homeboy, he was like showing me like his like music and stuff. And I saw that he really like had it. So like, he know I had something, he just kept telling me like work on it. So all I did was just kept pushing forward. And ever since then, I just getting better and better. If you could describe your musical style, what would that be? Really like, I like, I can't really say I have a style cause like, I do it like whatever, whatever vibe comes to me, I'll just do it. Like I'm very versatile. Like I like to do a whole lot of other music, like uh rock, you know, country music too, you know. I I like stuff like out of the box. I just feel like the regular genre, you know, I'm not just one one track mind, you know. Well, that's what's up, man. I mean, from Beaumont, you don't really have a lot of artists who are necessarily musically inclined to the point to where they incorporate pop music or any other genres. Usually, if it's one thing that they do, that's what they do. Right. Um, do you feel that's what sets you apart from most people or is there more on top of the eclectic music taste? Well, I feel like everybody has their own style of music, everybody has their own taste, so it's like, my what makes me like, I don't even want to say different. It's just like, which just make me have my own style. It's like just the way I listen to different types of music than everybody. Everybody listens to like the same music type, type of genre of music. Me, I expand my mind to different levels of music. And like stuff that don't even have like actual lyrics on there, just like instrumentals and stuff like that, nice beats and stuff, you know? Right. I don't just like listen to music to everybody's like, you know, I do actually listen to people's music, you know? Something I ain't never said to nobody, but <clears throat> I love reggae music. Right. I I was listening to reggae so tough when I was living in Houston that I felt it enhanced what I was doing, even though I wasn't making reggae music. I was making rap music. Right. It kind of just because I started to understand and see the similarities between rap and reggae. It's really like rap, but they rapping in their own language. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And which is why the connection between rap and reggae has always been so good if you paid attention to it. Right. Now, that's one genre of music. Something else I wanted to ask you, too, because I ask everybody this. Mm -hmm. I think I asked Kid D this, too. Um, how do you feel about the division that exists? in Beaumont, Texas, between artists? Well, I really don't like, me personally, they have their own position in life, their own perspectives of like how they live. And so it's like, yeah. if I comment on it, how can I like say anything about it? Because that's their circumstance they have to be. Well, in. you know what? I, I, didn't clear, I didn't make it clear what I was talking about. I'm not talking about nothing that got to do with outside of music because right. that's another issue for right. you know we can't really talk about that what i'm talking about is the division that exists within music you have young artists and they're over here 
Okay. And you have older artists, and they over here. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, I don't see nobody connecting the dot or building a bridge between the young and the old. So it's right. almost like we we both in the same city, but we on two different islands, two different ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, uh, maybe now that I'm asking the question brings clarity to the situation at hand right. because there is a division out here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But how do you feel about that is the question. Like, do you go back and listen to old music? Oh, for sure. I love old school music. I grew up with an old school family. You know, I listen to like Keith Sweat, yeah, Johnny Gibbs, you know, what I'm saying? You know like, like real soul music. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand how to, you know, how you can have a smartphone that got YouTube and you can go in and type in anything you want. Mm -hmm. Man, you can go back and find anything. Like, you can do, if you want to do your homework on rap, it's there. Man. Everything from documentaries to videos to interviews, behind the scenes. YouTube is like a universe. YouTube got everything. It's you like know what I'm saying? Like, I, but, you know, and just like how I would have to look up somebody new because I might not know or haven't heard of them, mm. that could be done on the other side as well. Because if you don't know your history, you're not going to know where you're going. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's a word to the wise to everybody that's rapping. You got to realize it didn't just start in 2022. Right. Somebody had to lay the groundwork. I'm going to be watch with me. In the 80s, there were rappers and DJs who set up the play and opened up the doors so that I can come through in the 90s. Mm -hmm. My class, my group of people, we set it up and open up the doors to where your generation can come to. Right. In the internet, social media era, because mm -hmm. we didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm trying to build, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to bridge the gap, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm seeing, like, at first, I'm not going to front, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But then through this podcast, through talking to people, sitting down, understanding why things are the way they are, why people make the music they make, why people do the things they do, mm -hmm. gives me an understanding that I didn't have before. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you're talking to somebody who don't listen to nothing new. Right. But it's a reason why. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it has no relation to my life. Mm. You came out of a different era. Yeah, I came out of a different era. All the stuff that is really nothing new that's being discussed. Let me say that right now. Like it's just a different sound. It's just a different sound. That's and and, and today uh there's a different style of, of rapping. Mm. So, you know, some people rap like it's one big run on sentence, other people chop the flow and modify it how they do it you know what i'm saying but as far as content or as far as what people are talking about they've been talking about this shit since the 80s that's why i like it. you I know what i'm saying like get into that stuff because at the same time music is creativity everybody get, got some creativity in them if they love music they're gonna make any type of music as long as it's creativity you got a beat behind it you got some instruments behind it you got a little something you can have just some rhythm with it you are creating music right then and there so it's like Either you gonna have an opinion about it, like people are gonna like it, people not gonna like it. You know, that's just how it goes. Do how to do our life. You know what I'm saying? Good and evil. I feel that. Do you? Uh, are you planning on putting out any music this year? Oh, for sure. Most Before definitely. this year, I will. Oh, most definitely. Do you have a title for well, project? I do got a little some little project I came up with. You know what I'm saying? It's called Savior. You know what I'm saying? I came up with this when I was locked up. I wrote a bunch of songs and stuff like that. But like, I always like had like a plan before I got locked up in 2020 to like make a little project, and then I had fun and came up with it. All right. Well, I gotta ask you this question because I ask everybody this: one. Do you have a top five best rappers? Top five best rappers. Top five best rappers of all time. Uh, you could do of all time, or you could do right now. Either one. Hey, all I do is play. Right now, that's like a lot. Um, 
I'll probably give it to Jonah Lucas, um, my baby. And uh, I give young boys props. And uh, I really don't. Some people I just don't really listen to. I, I'll give it to, uh, I still listen to Kanye. I ain't gonna lie. But lately, for some reason, I've been listening to Cardi. Who? Uh -huh. Playboy Cardi. Okay. I've been listening to him a lot. He's just been on like, he's just expanding my mind as like different sounds type stuff. But like for the people that that's dead and stuff, I always like this like X and Juice World and Lil Peep. And, like Lauren Hill, Tupac Biggie, like I listen to people. I still listen to them. I don't really like listen to like the new industry. I'm su I'm surprised that you said Pac. Um, I have to ask you, what is it about his music that makes you want to listen to it? His, his energy is like, it's like, he stood for something. He's like, he's just not one of the regular rappers. You can tell, like, he just wasn't one of them that, like, cared about all the... I'm, the glad, I'm glad you said what you said, because I have a friend, shout out to Timo. He uh, tagged me in this post today where NBA young boy said he is the Tupac of this generation. First of all, I have any uh, problem with anybody comparing themselves to him or anybody else because before you can be anybody else, you must be yourself first. Right. Second thing is Tupac Shakur is some sh major shoes for anyone to fill. It cannot be done. And I and I asked him this, and I'm gonna say I said this early, and I'm gonna say this again. I asked him. I said, "Does he have a dear mama or a keep your head up in his catalog?" Mm -hmm. I said, "Does he have college courses on his life and lyrics? Does he have a museum that documents his entire life, movies and music?" Right. You're never gonna be able to match the level of impact or influence. Right. It cannot. It will not be. It has not been done. They, they tried to do it with Eminem. They mm -hmm. tried to compare Kendrick Lamar. They tried to compare J. Cole. They tried to compare Zero. You cannot compare because to Tupac Shakur. They try to set like the tone. Like everybody like Tupac was like what to them set the tone for what all these other rappers like should And do. I understand why, because you know that's the inf that was influence. Right. He influenced me. He influenced a lot of people that's still out there making music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, before you could be the next man, you have to be yourself. You cannot be someone else. I know this society makes it look like you can dress like the next man, act like the next man, and be cool, but you have no identity right. if you look like the next man. You know what I'm saying? If you model yourself after the next man. You know what I'm saying? I just don't get that. But I'm from the era of identity. You know, back when we went to school, if there was a guy, if we had on the same shirt, somebody went home and changed shirts. That's how serious it was back then. We didn't want to wear the same shoes to school. We didn't want to look the same. Right. You know what I'm saying? But times have changed. Uh, before we get up out of here, would you like to say anything to anybody? You know what I'm saying? Well, shout out to my boy, Lil Yama, man. I go mess with him. You feel me? That's my boy right there. Shout out to the whole Tri City out there. Shout out to Fall Now. Shout out to all my Texans. Y'all already know y'all going up, man. Do y'all things. Stay positive. Stay free. You feel me? It's going down in this bitch. And today, we have another Holmes ENT special guest. Introduce yourself. No, uh, I'll be reading, you know, from coming be out from be out, ready to sit you know. All right, well, let's take it back to the beginning, man. When did you decide that uh, you was gonna take this music thing serious? Shit, late, the late December 2022. I can see I really got serious with it because you know, at first, I was, I've been, I've been like a rapper, like, since young, so young. But like I'm just not trying to take you serious. Like, I believe December comes 
Who inspired you musically? Was there anybody that you listened to that made you say, okay, I can, I can do this? Nah, not really. What inspired me is like, when I'm like, when I show people like I can rap, they'll be like, they'll be like, you should take me serious, you know? You should actually start rapping because you know you got something, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So no art, no other artists inspire you? Nobody you grew up listening to? I mean, yeah, I grew up listening to people, but you know, like that, that's what, that's how I, I started rapping though. Like, oh, okay. You know? What? What's your plans for uh, putting out music for the rest of 2022? Planning on putting something out this yeah, year? Yeah, I'm planning on, I got, I got, I got some music, it's been working. It's been working, I've been doing. If you could describe your musical style, what would that be? I mean, I, I haven't found my style yet, but like, I mean, I be doing, I be singing sometimes, I be rapping, I be switching it up. Man. But I can't really say I got a flow yet, because I haven't found my, my flow yet. Well, that might be something uh you might need to find, man. I mean, to be good at a craft, yeah. you have to, you know what I'm saying, practice. Practice makes perfect. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with enough practice, you will eventually get to perfection or somewhat close to it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you from BR. You say VR. What is VR? Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. We done. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. From the boot. Yeah. Well, we got plenty of family from the boot. You know what I'm saying? I'm surprised you don't have an inspiration in rap coming out of the boot. Because, you know, the boot has a a musical legacy of its own. Thank you. you know what I'm saying? Aside from what happens in Texas. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you don't listen to Boosie? Yeah, I listen to Boosie. Yeah. Gates. Do you have a top five? No top five? Uh, no. What? Before we get up out of here, would you like to say anything? Man, shout out all my boys from the, from the bottom, man. Shout out my nigga Kid D, man, you know. Yeah. That's, That's it. it. That's it, brother. All right. Well, on behalf of Home ZMT, Good people at One Man Records. I am Cornbread Capone. This is Unpopular Honesty. Until next time, peace and love, baby. You know what I'm saying?